So today I'm going to show you how to add or remove volume spaces in a Fox 34 fork to make it more or less progressive. So if you find that your fork is lacking support and you're bottoming out too easily, you might want to add one or more volume spaces. Conversely, if your fork is feeling too harsh and you're not using full travel, you might want to take one or more out. So the first thing you want to do is make sure the fork is nice and clean so no dirt falls inside the fork while you're taking it apart. Then it's a good idea to check the air pressure before you start. For this we need the shock pump. Just going to screw that onto the valve. See it says we're at 81.5 psi. If you want to be super accurate, there's a wee tip you can do. So some of the air will flow into the shock pump when you put it on and that will give you a lower reading than it actually was at. So if you take it off again and put it back on, see we've lost another two psi there. So we know that it was actually at about 83 and a half psi before we started. So to be super accurate, it'll be 83 psi we'll be aiming for when we put the fork back together. The most important thing that you mustn't forget is to remove all of the air from the fork before you take it apart. If you just use an Allen key, press that carefully into the valve, make sure all of the air comes out. Next up we need a 27mm socket and a socket wrench. Ideally you'd want a ground flat socket for this, but you can make do with a conventional socket. You just have to take extra care not to round off the wrench flats when you're undoing it. So install your socket onto your socket wrench, come around the front, press it down firmly with your thumb, holding the wheel between your legs, and carefully and firmly undo the socket. When it's fully unthreaded, you can just take the top cap out and it comes pre-installed with two volume spacers. So if you want to make your fork more progressive, that's harder to bottom out, you need to add a volume spacer and they just clip into place like so. If you want to make the fork less progressive and easier to use full travel, you just slide them out like so. Check Fox's website for the maximum number of volume spaces you can fit in your fork, which depends on the travel. For this particular fork, the maximum is five. So once you've chosen the number of volume spacers and fitted them to your top cap, it's time to pop them back into the fork. Set your socket wrench to tighten and tighten the top cap back onto the fork. You'll then need a torque wrench to torque the top cap up to 24.8 Newton meters. Like so. You then just need the shock pump to pump it back up to your original pressure. So now we're back up at 83 psi. So I'm now going to take the bike out of the stand so I can cycle the fork. This allows the air to move out of the positive spring and into the negative spring. Just cycle it slowly three or four times and you should feel it soften up in the beginning part of the stroke as the air moves from the positive spring into the negative spring. So as you can see this reduces the pressure in the positive spring so we need to pump it back up to get to our original pressure. So you need to pump it back up to your original pressure. And if you slightly overfill it, just use the bleed valve to get it back to the pressure you were at before. Then all you have to do is take the shock pump back off. Remember to thread your valve cap back on. and you're good to go. The procedure for a RockShox Pike, Lyric or Yari is very similar, except you need a 24mm socket instead of a 27mm. The volume space is screwed together rather than snapped together, and the torque setting is very slightly different at 24 newton meters instead of 24.8 newton meters. Next time you hit the trails, just use the O-ring to measure how much travel you use. If you're still bottoming out too regularly and not getting enough support, you might want to add even more tokens. And if you're finding it too harsh and you're not using enough travel, you might want to remove even more tokens. 